We're going to continue on in lesson one, installing and configuring domain controllers of the 15 lessons that we have in this course. And in the second topic of this lesson, we're going to explore how to install a new forest. Remember, when we perform our first installation of a domain controller, we're creating our forest. But we can't do so without planning. Prior to kicking it off, we need to understand the forest functional level as well as the domain functional level, which we've already talked about. But we also need to know the name of the domain that we want to create. We want to make sure it's a unique name, and we need to be concerned about the DNS SRV records, SRV or service records. This is how users locate your domain controllers. They actually ping DNS and say, dude, I need a domain controller, and they'll bring back an SRV record, taking advantage of the sites that we talked about earlier, so they're pointing them or directing them to a local domain controller versus one somewhere across the world. To create an AD4, it's a two-step process. We need to go in and install the ADDS role, and then we need to take that server and we need to promote it to a DC. We can do so using the GUI, which is what we're going to do, or we can use PowerShell. For step one, we'll use the install-windows feature, AD-domain services, and for the promotion of the server to a domain controller, we'll run the install-addds domain controller PowerShell command. So easily done using PowerShell as well as the GUI. Domain controller options that we're going to encounter during the installation. We talked about the force and domain functional level. We know what that's all about. It needs to be able to contact the DNS server to create those SRB records. So it's going to install the DNS role on that DC because it's required by ADDS. Alternatively, I can add a server to an existing DNS by unchecking this option and then pointing it to an existing DNS server. Your first domain controller will be a global catalog server. It's checked and you can't uncheck that. Later on, we'll talk about how we can manage global catalog servers and you won't be able to create an RODC as the first domain controller in your domain. Later on, again, we'll be able to do that. And the directory services restore mode. That's probably the most powerful tool that you'll have in your tool belt when it comes to repairing or restoring Active Directory. You'll need to make sure when you perform the installation of the AD force that you enter a secure password, you jot it down somewhere, and you store it in your safe or underneath your mattress or wherever you want to store that because that's going to be the tool that you're going to use to recover your domain controller in the event of a disaster. Let's step out to our image that contains a brand new installation of Windows Server 2016 and take the steps necessary to install a new forest. So here we are in our image and the server manager opens by default in Windows Server 2016. I'm going to go to the add roles and features option and you'll see we have the add roles and features wizard and if I want to remove a role I can start the remove roles and features wizard. But we're going to continue with adding the role. We're going to go ahead and click Next. We'll choose role-based or feature-based installation versus remote desktop services installation. And we'll click Next. We only have the single server on this computer, so I'm going to go ahead and leave the default server name selected. And you're going to see at the top we have ADCS, ADDS, ADFS, and ADLDS, as well as ADRMS. So this is where you go to install any of those. We're going to just install the Active Directory Domain Services saying, whoa, dude, you can't install these without these other tools, ADDS and ADLS tools, Active Directory Module for Windows PowerShell, your AD Administration Center, and the ADDS Snap-ins command line tools. And then this option right here is Include Management Tools. You're going to want to make sure that it's selected. You'll then click Add Features. Then you'll go ahead and click Next again. And in here, we'll take the default settings, and I'll click Next. And here it's telling me the Active Directory Domain Services will be installed. Things to note to help ensure that users can still log on. In case of a server outage, redundancy is key. Have at least two DCs. It also is telling me right here, requires a DNS server to be installed on the network. If you don't have one, we're going to take care of that for you and install DNS server on this machine. This is what we talked about previously, so that's all good. We'll go ahead and click Next. If it requires a restart, we're going to go ahead and click this checkbox here to go ahead and restart this. And that will allow it to perform a restart. I don't want to do that in the middle of a demo, so I'm going to say no here. And then it's listing out Active Directory Domain Services, Group Policy and Management, Remote Server Admin Tools. This is what we saw previously, so I'm not going to bore you with that. And with the beauty of video, you're not going to have to sit here and watch all this. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video after I click on Install. And then we're going to complete step one of creating our new Active Directory Forest. 
And you'll see that the installation of ADDS has been completed. So we've completed step one. And you'll see in here, Active Directory Domain Services was installed. And it's providing the option to promote this server to a domain controller right in the completion of the ADDS installation window. So let's go ahead and take advantage of that. We'll promote this server to a domain controller. And this is where we have to be very specific about what we're doing. Add a domain controller to an existing domain. No, we're not there. If I want to add a second domain controller, I would do that. But right now, we're creating a brand new forest. And so we're going to go ahead and create a root domain at azmtp.pearson.com. And then we'll click Next. Notice to the left the steps that we have to go through, by the way. And notice it's asking us for the forest functional level and the domain functional level. By default, it's Windows Server 2016. We don't have any other servers, so I can leave them that way. If I drop this down, notice, as I said, I can go back to 2008. If I leave the forest functional level at Windows Server 2016, that's all I can do with the domain functional level. But if I drop this to 2008 R2, then we get more options here. So just be aware of that. We're going to create this in the Windows Server 2016 world so we have all of the features. Specify domain controller capabilities. If I deselect this, I need to point to a DNS server. Otherwise, it's going to install DNS for me. Here's my global catalog server. I need to have that installed. And the first domain controller is going to hold that role. And this is where I talked about the RODC. I can't create an RODC for the first domain controller in our domain. Here's that DSRM password. This is the one that's extremely important for you to remember, to write it down and store it somewhere where you'll never forget it, because this is what's going to be used when you're trying to restore Active Directory. So we're going to leave the default settings pretty much on this screen and just supply the password as we move through the domain controller options. So we get a little warning about the delegation for this DNS server cannot be created because of an authoritative parent zone. They're going to take care of that for me so I'm not going to worry about it here. I'm going to go ahead and click next and good old NetBIOS is hanging out so as you can see we pre-populates it with AZMTP. We'll go ahead and click next again. And you're going to see we have default folders for the database folder, the log file, and sys file. Notice they're on the same location. If you have multiple drives, there's a slight, slight increase in performance if you move sys file to a different location. We're going to leave it alone here. We'll click Next. We have our review options. Make sure everything looks, smells, and tastes the way we want to. Check this out. These settings can be exported to a PowerShell script. Just imagine if you want to create multiple DCs using these same settings, you could actually go ahead and click View Script and export the appropriate PowerShell commands out. We're going to go ahead and click Next. It's going to do a prerequisite check to make sure the server is ready for domain controller activity. And you'll see all prerequisite checks pass successfully. Click Install to begin the installation. A few warnings down here, but nothing that they're worried about to complete the installation for the domain controller. So we will go ahead and click Install down here. And I'll again pause the video as the server is promoted to a domain controller. And I didn't have a chance to show you, but it popped up a little banner. It says you are going to be logged out and your machine restarted. And then we're back into our server image. And now if we go over to Tools, you're going to see we have the Active Directory Users and Computers, Sites and Services, your Domains and Trust, your Administrative Center, and the AD Module for Windows PowerShell. So, we have successfully created a forest by taking a Windows Server 2016 image and performing a two-step operation to upgrade it to a domain controller, therefore creating our new forest.